Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the eighth lecture of the South Southeast Asia Lecture Hall. Um, my name is Assistant Professor Dr. M. L. Pinit Pan Paribatra from Thammasat University, Bangkok, Thailand, and it is my pleasure to be um, the moderator of this event um, today. Um, the Southeast Asia Lecture Hall is a free, independent, people-to-people -people program that aims to provide free and regular access to Southeast Asian students and lecturers to world-class lectures from various fields of study. Foreign Policy Community of Indonesia has partnered with various universities across Southeast Asia. And we would like to thank our partners from across the region. Um, we are joined by Sisa Purutsima, Secretary of Finance of the Philippines and the Chair of Economic Development Cluster of the President's Cabinet from 2010 um, to 2016. He has had extensive work experience in public accounting, both in the Philippines and abroad. Thank you, uh, Con uh, Inet Ban. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. I was asked by my uh, friend, uh, fellow Milken Institute Asia fellow, Pa'andino, uh, to talk to you about doing business in ASEAN. You know, when Pa'andino calls, I answer, not only because uh, I hold him with the deepest regard, but also because I know the events he organizes are always excellent learning opportunities. E, obviously, ASEAN is in the East. In fact, ASEAN has been the driving force of Asian economic growth together with China the past 50 years. 50% of the world's best performing economies came from ASEAN in the past 50 years. In fact, in the past 20 years, ASEAN averaged a growth of more than 5% per annum. So it is obvious that you just don't look east, but ASEAN is an area that you should look into. The region that we live in, unfortunately, is one of the most vulnerable to climate change. The Philippines in particular uh, ranks third as the most vulnerable country, uh, third most vulnerable country in the world. And therefore, we must work together uh, to really uh, uh, become an agent for change in terms of uh, uh, minimizing the effects of uh, climate change. And therefore, we must also look at uh, climate change as an opportunity as a business opportunity, as an opportunity to drive economic growth uh, pre uh, post pandemic. But I think we need a more entrepreneurial government. We need more entrepreneurial policies. We need the more entrepreneurial politics. Because um, if we could maintain an inward looking uh, approach, then we might miss this boat. Uh, we might miss to leapfrog, use this uh, digital opportunity and this green uh, economy opportunity to leapfrog from where we are to a more prosperous uh, uh, future. So in summary, I believe that uh, post-pandemic, we will have an edge if we focus on our region, ASEAN, if we focus on the digital economy and the enablers that surround it, if we take advantage of uh, the climate crisis to really use the green economy as a way to jumpstart uh, businesses out of the pandemic. Seeing the big trend, what does ASEAN-China relation in the economy sector entails in the future? What are the best ways to become a successful entrepreneur? Can you share some tips and tricks? We are a well-linked country and we, we don't have the we don't have Z. And then I would like to know about your ideas. Can we improve on the logistics business side for for in case of the pandemic situation? Because recently the pandemic situation is very impact on our business in, in our country. And so I would like to know if they have any chance to improve and to run the business 
Um, we truly learned a lot from our speakers, and I think our speakers give us a very clear um, ideas about how uh, the region has so much potentials in the post-pandemic uh, scenario.